Hi, I am super glad that you are joining us today to watch this video to learn a little bit about using formulas in Algebra 1. So if you are watching this video to work on some problems in Study Island, it's going to be under the topic formulas and algebraic expressions. So we're going to be using some basic formulas such as volume and perimeter. However, in Algebra 1, we're going to take it up a notch where you might not be solving for what the formula is solved for. So area equals base times height. You might not be finding area. You might be finding base and, or height. And you, these are very applicable because you use formulas all the time in science class. And I like to sew. So lots of times when I'm designing a blanket or a project, I have to use the area formula and be able to know how to use find base and height if I want to make it so big. As always, remember the study tips where you can pause, rewind, for fast forward through this video to help you out. And I highly recommend that you take notes because what you hear, you remember so much and then you remember even more if you're writing it down and practicing with me. And then also remember you can pause at the beginning of a problem and then Try the problem out yourself and then watch my video to see how I work it out and that way you can find the mistakes that you're making and learn that way also. So I'm glad you're here and we're about to start. So some examples of formulas you might see is temperature where you have Fahrenheit equals 9 fifths times Celsius plus 32 degrees, or it could also be rewritten so that it's um, the Celsius up front and the Fahrenheit in the equation. Um, and remember, that's a really common one for if you need to go back and forth between Celsius and Fahrenheit and a thermometer. Um, you know, Celsius, you have boiling is 100, and Fahrenheit, it's um, 212. Yeah, you know, freezing at 32 on the Fahrenheit side and zero on the Celsius side. So sometimes in science, you'll have to go back and forth. Or if you're traveling in a country where they are metric based, that type of thing. And then you also might need to know that volume equals length times width times height. And you might need to know that um, perimeter problems or equations such as perimeter equals two times length plus two times width. Temperature measurements are converted between degrees Fahrenheit and degrees Celsius by the following formula. So in this problem, they give us Fahrenheit or F equals 9 fifths C, that's Celsius, plus 32. The temperature in Dallas rose from the morning temperature of 43 degrees Fahrenheit to the afternoon high of 71 degrees Fahrenheit. What was the difference in temperature in degrees Celsius to the nearest degree? Now, you're going to have to watch out. This problem, they're trying to get you. And the reason for that is because the first thing that you want to do is, okay, it says difference. I want to subtract my... I want to subtract my temperatures. So when you do that, it's 71 minus 43, and 71 minus 43 is going to be 28, okay? And then you think, okay, then I'm going to convert 28 to Celsius. Well, that doesn't work that way because Celsius and Fahrenheit are different scales. Let's look at my thermometer over here to explain what I mean. So if you look at 71 degrees Fahrenheit, which is right about here, and 43 degrees Fahrenheit, which is right about there, that looks on the Celsius side here, we have about 5, 10, 15 ish. Now, granted, when you do this problem on an EOI or in City Island, you're not going to have a thermometer to look at. So it's about 15 ish. So our answer that would make sense would be A or B. 
However, if you just straight up convert 28 degrees, the difference in Fahrenheit, let's look at 28 degrees Fahrenheit. It's going to be right in the top of that green mark, and that's actually negative on the Celsius. So it doesn't make sense that a temp difference in temperature would be negative, especially when it's increasing. And we don't have any negative answers over here. So that's because these are different scales. It doesn't work to subtract in Fahrenheit and then find the Celsius. You have to convert the 41 degrees Fahrenheit and the 71 degrees Fahrenheit, then subtract. So I'm going to go ahead and erase that, and we'll go ahead and work the problem the correct way. And hopefully we will get A or B as our answer. All right, so I'm gonna, first I'm gonna do the 43 degrees. Okay, so 43 degrees is a Fahrenheit, so I'm gonna substitute that in for the F in the equation. So it's gonna be 43 equals nine fifths, and I'm looking for the Celsius, so I'm gonna write C, plus 32. And then I'm just gonna use my equation solving skills to solve for C. So I have the 9 fifths times C plus 32. This is a two-step equation, so I always do addition or subtraction first. So I'm going to subtract 32 from both sides. Those 32s cancel, because 32 minus 32 is 0. And then 43 minus 32 is 11. So I'm going to have 11 equals 9 fifths C. Okay, so you can divide both sides by 9 fifths here. And if you have a calculator that you really know the, the fraction button well on it, you could just do 11 divided by 9 fraction button 5 equals and get your answer that way. And it's perfectly fine to use a calculator. Don't feel like you're cheating at all. And now you can also multiply both sides by the reciprocal, which when I'm not using a calculator is my favorite way. And the reason that I do that is because 9 fifths times 5 ninths, those are going to cancel and you're just left with the 1. C, or just C in this. And then on the other side, you're going to have 5 ninths times 11. And 5 ninths times 11 is 55 ninths. Or that's the same as 6.1 repeating. So 43 degrees Fahrenheit is the same as 6.1 degrees Celsius. Okay. Now we're going to have to do the same thing with the 71. So in my formula, I have Fahrenheit, and I'm going to know Fahrenheit 71, so I'm going to replace that F with 71. In my other equation here. So 71 equals 9 fifths C. I don't know that that's what I'm looking for, plus 32. And then it's the same thing. I'm going to use my equation solving skill, so I'm going to subtract 32 from both sides. And 71 minus 32 is 39. And 5 ninths times 39 is 195 ninths, or that's going to be 21.6 repeating. So that's what our C equals. Now our last step is 
is going to be to subtract those two Celsius. So, so you're going to take 21.6 minus 6.1. which is 15.5, which it says to round to the nearest degree, so that's going to be 16 degrees Celsius, so that means my answer is B. All right, this problem, it says a rectangular pool with a three foot wide path is shown, and it gives us this diagram. The pole has a depth of 10 feet throughout. What is the volume of the pole? All right, so you're going to need to know that volume is equal to length times width times height. So here, the volume is going to equal to the length of the pole is 12. And then the width of the pole is 6, so times 6. And then the height, that's going to be how tall is the pole or how deep is the pole. It tells us that in the problem is 10. This 3 here is extra information. They're trying to give that to you to throw you off. So volume equals, well, you can use a calculator or if you know 12 times 6 is 72 and 72 times 10 is 720 and that's going to be cubic feet so my answer here is c All right this next problem says work w is measured in joules using the formula work equals F times D, where F is the force in newtons, and D is the distance over which the force is applied in meters. If 40 joules of work are needed to move a box a distance of 80 meters, how much force was applied to the box? All right, so I'm going to go ahead and rewrite our formula just so it's easier to see. We have work equals force times distance. And then in my problem, I'm given a distance of 8 meters and a work of 40 meters, and it wants to know how much force. Okay, so I'm going to go and plug in what I know. I know W is 40, and I'm looking for force, so I'm going to rewrite the F, and I know distance is 8. So now I'm just going to have to use my equation-solving abilities to solve for force, to solve for the F. So it's force times 8 to undo the multiplication. I'm going to divide both sides by 8. Remember, whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other to keep the equation balanced. These 8s cancel, and the and I'm just left with F on the right side. And on the left side, I have 40 divided by 8, which is 5. So it is a... It has a force of 5 newtons, so my answer is C.